Foreign Affairs is a Pulitzer Prize-winning novel by Alison Lurie, published in 1984. The story follows two American academics, Vinnie Miner and Fred Turner, who travel to England for a six-month research trip. Vinnie, a single and reserved literature professor, is unsure about the trip, while Fred, a married and outgoing professor of economics, is eager to have a new experience. As they interact with the locals and become involved in their own affairs, their lives begin to unravel in unexpected ways. Vinnie's personal life takes a turn when she begins a romance with an Englishman, and Fred's marriage is in danger of falling apart due to his affair with a younger American woman. Through Vinnie and Fred's experiences, the novel explores themes of culture shock, self-discovery, and relationships. Lurie's writing is sharp, witty, and insightful, with a keen eye for the nuances of interpersonal dynamics. The novel is both a character study and a commentary on the cultural differences between America and England. Larry McMurtry's Pulitzer Prize-winning novel, Lonesome Dove, is an epic western that tells the story of a group of former Texas Rangers who embark on a dangerous cattle drive from Texas to Montana. The novel is set in the late 19th century and explores themes of friendship, loyalty, and the harsh realities of the American West. The novel centers around two main characters, Augustus Gus McRae and Woodrow F. Call, who are former Texas Rangers and cattle ranchers. They decide to embark on a cattle drive to Montana, despite the dangers and challenges that lie ahead. Along the way, they encounter various obstacles, including hostile Native American tribes, bandits, and harsh weather conditions. Throughout the novel, McMurtry paints a vivid and realistic picture of life in the American West during this time period. He explores the complex relationships between men and women, and the struggles of living in a harsh and unforgiving landscape. The novel also touches on themes of death and loss, as several characters face their own mortality during the journey. A Summons to Memphis is a novel by Peter Taylor, first published in 1986. The book won the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction in 1987. The story is set in Memphis, Tennessee, in the early 1960s, and follows the lives of the Carver family, who are struggling with issues of memory, identity, and family history. The novel is told through the eyes of Philip Carver, a middle-aged man who has lived in New York City for many years. When his elderly father, a former lawyer and judge, decides to move back to Memphis and sell the family home, Philip and his siblings are forced to confront their family's troubled past. As they revisit old memories and grudges, they come to understand how their father's decisions have shaped their lives. The book is a powerful meditation on the nature of family, memory, and the passing of time. It is a slow-paced novel, but its intricate plot and carefully crafted characters make for a compelling read. The themes of the novel are universal, and the characters are relatable and engaging. Beloved is a novel by Toni Morrison that explores the devastating impact of slavery on the lives of African Americans. The story is set in Ohio in 1873 and follows the life of Seath, a former slave who has escaped to freedom but is haunted by her past. The arrival of a mysterious young woman named Beloved triggers a series of events that force Seath to confront the painful memories of her past and the harsh realities of her present. Morrison's novel explores themes such as the psychological effects of slavery, the struggle for identity and self-worth, and the complexity of mother-daughter relationships. The novel also employs a non-linear narrative structure that weaves together past and present events, dreams, memories, and supernatural occurrences. Beloved won the Pulitzer Prize for fiction in 1988 and has since been adapted into a movie and a play. Morrison's vivid and lyrical prose, her vivid portrayal of characters, and her exploration of complex themes have made Beloved a literary masterpiece and a significant contribution to the African-American literary tradition. Breathing Lessons is a Pulitzer Prize-winning novel by Ann Tyler, published in 1988. The story takes place over a single day, as a married couple, Maggie and Ira Moran, set out on a road trip to attend the funeral of the husband of Maggie's best friend, Serena. As they travel through the countryside, they reflect on their own lives, their marriage, and the choices they have made. The novel is a poignant exploration of marriage and family life, 
and Tyler's keen observation of human behavior is on full display. Maggie and Ira are well-drawn characters, flawed and imperfect but ultimately endearing, and the struggles they face in their marriage feel universal. Breathing Lessons was widely acclaimed upon its release, praised for its warmth, humor, and emotional depth. It was awarded the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction in 1989, cementing Tyler's reputation as one of America's most talented and insightful novelists. Overall, Breathing Lessons is a touching and thought-provoking novel that explores the complexities of human relationships with honesty, wit, and compassion. The Mambo King's Play Songs of Love is a Pulitzer Prize-winning novel by Oscar Hijuelos that tells the story of two Cuban-born brothers, Cesar and Nestor Castillo, who immigrate to the United States in the 1950s and find success as musicians in New York City's vibrant mambo music scene. The novel is a rich tapestry of music, culture, and romance, weaving together the brothers' experiences as they navigate the challenges of adapting to a new country, chasing their dreams of musical fame and fortune, and struggling with the complexities of love and relationships. Hijulo's writing is vibrant and evocative, capturing the energy and passion of the mambo music scene and painting vivid portraits of the characters who populate it. The novel also explores themes of identity, belonging, and the immigrant experience, as the Castillo brothers grapple with their Cuban heritage and the cultural assimilation required of them in America. Rabbit at Rest is the fourth and final novel in John Updike's series of novels featuring the character Harry Rabbit Angstrom. The book was published in 1990 and won the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction in 1991. The novel follows Rabbit as he nears retirement and confronts the issues of aging, mortality, and family relationships. It explores the complexity of Rabbit's character and the struggles he faces as he tries to come to terms with his past and present. It also delves into the lives of his family members, including his wife, son, and daughter, and their various struggles with addiction and infidelity. Updike's writing is powerful and evocative, and his descriptions of Rabbit's emotional and physical struggles are both poignant and insightful. The novel paints a vivid picture of a man at the end of his life, grappling with his regrets and trying to make sense of his legacy. Overall, Rabbit at Rest is a masterful conclusion to Updike's series, a deeply introspective and moving novel that offers a powerful meditation on life, death, and the human experience. A Thousand Acres is a Pulitzer Prize-winning novel by Jane Smiley, published in 1991. The novel is a modern retelling of William Shakespeare's play King Lear, set in rural Iowa during the 1980s. The story follows the Cook family, consisting of aging farmer Larry Cook and his three daughters Ginny, Rose, and Caroline. When Larry decides to divide his thousand-acre farm among his daughters, the family's hidden resentments and secrets begin to emerge, leading to a tragic chain of events that ultimately tears the family apart. The novel explores themes of power, control, family dynamics, and the complexities of rural life in the modern era. It portrays the difficulties faced by farmers in the face of changing times and the tensions that arise when the younger generation seeks to modernize the family business. Through the eyes of the three sisters, the novel delves into the challenges of female identity, relationships, and the expectations placed on them by their patriarchal society. A Thousand Acres is a powerful and thought-provoking novel that examines the universal themes of family, love, and loss. A Good Scent from a Strange Mountain is a collection of short stories by Robert Olin Butler that won the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction in 1993. The book consists of 15 interconnected stories that are narrated by Vietnamese immigrants living in Louisiana. Each story gives a glimpse into the lives of different characters, exploring themes such as identity, memory, culture clash, and the struggles of immigration. The stories are written in a distinct voice that captures the essence of the Vietnamese language and culture, as well as the challenges of adapting to a new country. Butler masterfully weaves together different narratives to create a cohesive whole, with each story adding depth and richness to the overall portrait of the Vietnamese-American experience. One of the standout stories is A Ghost Story, which follows the ghost of a Vietnamese soldier as he tries to come to terms with his death and the afterlife. The story is haunting and poignant, touching on themes of loss and grief that are universal.
The Shipping News is a Pulitzer Prize-winning novel by E. Annie Prue that was published in 1993. The novel follows Coyle, a man who is struggling to find his place in the world after a series of tragic events. He moves with his two young daughters from New York to Newfoundland to start a new life and work as a reporter for the local newspaper. Through Coyle's experiences, the novel explores themes of identity, family, and community. The characters in the small town of Killetclaw are complex and quirky, and Prue captures their struggles and triumphs with humor and sensitivity. Coyle's relationship with his aunt, Ugnes Ham, is particularly poignant, as he learns about his family's history and confronts the secrets of his past. Prue's writing is lyrical and evocative, painting a vivid picture of the stark beauty and harsh realities of life in Newfoundland. The novel's use of local dialect adds to its authenticity, and the descriptions of the sea and the natural world are hauntingly beautiful.